Welcome to Living Stream Church and the topic of my message today it's called confession to whom and why. I think this topic is not very popular nowadays. I think that Google thinks it's not very popular today. But uh, confession, it's something that it's been practiced in Christianity for a very long time. It's also practiced in different religions. And uh, possibly you had a positive or a negative experience. Um, maybe you personally went through a confession with a priest and you either uh, have a bitter taste or you have um, a good testimony to share. Today, there is, um, if we look in the Bible, we see that confession was practiced in both Old and New Testament. Today, there is, a, I would say, pretty popular opinion that we should not confess to a man anymore. Today, we should only confess to God alone. But it's interesting to observe how people, it doesn't really matter how much they know about God or how much they know the Word of God, when they are in the hospital, before they pass, before they die, or if they serve in the army, before they die, they would call a priest. Interesting, not a friend, not a neighbor. Today, you can confess online. They choose not to do it through internet. They choose to call a priest and to talk to him. Very interesting why if we know that only God can forgive sins, why people confess sometimes their sins to a priest, to a pastor, to a minister? All these questions and many more, we will try to find an answer in this sermon series, Confession, to whom and why. Let's try to come up with a simple definition. What do I mean by confession? Confession is when you confess, when you admit, when you share your sins uh, before God, first of all, but in the presence of someone else, usually in the presence of a priest or a minister or a pastor. Why we need to confess? Why it even exists? And uh, two simple reasons uh, in my introduction why confession is part of Christianity, part of the scripture. First reason is because the Bible talks about it. Both Old and New Testament talks about confession. So before we argue, should we confess to men today, let's all agree that confession, the origin of confession, idea comes from God, not from men. Before church even started its existence, the principle, the idea, the principle of confession, we find it in the Old Testament and it comes from God. And second reason why we talk about confession, because uh, the practice of this ministry and many other experiences, they prove that People that some, that in many cases it gives it brings good results. So once again, the origin of confession comes from the Old Testament, and first time it's mentioned in the Bible, it's in the book of Numbers, chapter five, verse six. God is saying, "Give the following instructions to the people of Israel: If any of the people," have sinned, betray the Lord by doing wrong to another person, they must confess their sin. If you read the context of this chapter, you will see that God is giving instructions to his priests that they must teach his people. If they sin, they must go and confess their sins to the priest. Another example from the Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 5 verse 6, it says, this is an offering which the priest will purify you from sin. Who? Who will pur purify you? The priest, priest will purify you from sin, making you right with the Lord. And then if you read the context, they were supposed, they were supposed to bring an animal and, um, and, and make a sacrifice and they would be forgiven. So that's how it was in the Old Testament. Now let's go into the New Testament. Acts chapter 19 verse 18, it says... Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. 
Different translation says they were confessing and telling their deeds, their wrong actions. So we see the Old Testament and the New Testament, they both talk about confession. And obviously it talks about believers because unbelievers, they don't see a point at all. They don't have a sin. They don't acknowledge sin. They don't deal with sin. They like sin. They live in sin. But those who believe, those who chose to follow Jesus Christ, they, they battle. They fight against sin. So they are the ones who are kind of, we are talking about confession with among believers. So the point of the confession when we read these scriptures, obviously, you know, people would come to receive spiritual help, spiritual advice, spiritual counseling. For some people, uh, they were looking for freedom, freedom. They were not able to receive that freedom possibly on their own. And that's why they chose this path of confession. And the um, question still remains, who should we confess today? To God? To pastor? What if I don't trust him to anybody else? And that's, these are the, the, we will try to find answers to all these questions. So we will go through you, with you through three different types of confession. Type number one, confession to God. Type number two, Confession to one another, people to people. Confession number three, confession to a priest, a minister, or a pastor. So let's dive in step by step. First point, confession to God. First of all, we as believers, we must know, and we see this in the scripture, that we must confess our sins to God. First of all, above all, and the reason behind this is very simple. Only God can forgive sins. Only God. We are somehow related. Uh, we have an orthodox background, and some people, they think, they claim that the priest has the power to, to forgive your sins. But when you read the New Testament, you see that only God can forgive our sins. That's something to keep in mind. And we are to confess our sins, first of all, to God. Let's read the main scripture of our discussion for today. It's 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 through 9. It says, But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus. His Son cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves. But, pay attention, if we confess our sins to Him, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. First of all, I want you to see in the scripture that the fact of confession comes from the New Testament and the fact that confession brings us freedom. It cleanses us. So sometimes we feel, we feel, we know that we get dirty because of the sin. The fact how we can be washed or cleansed things cleansed by sin often we say the blood of Jesus Christ makes us clean yes but before that there is another step you confess you can you acknowledge you admit you confess your sin and then the blood of Jesus Christ makes us clean another thing is in that in that passage it says for those who walk or live in light what does it mean to live in light how do you translate this in practical daily life do you have to have a flashlight with you? Do you have to change the light bulbs in your house? What do you need to do in order to live in the light? First of all, the Bible says that your word is a lamp to my feet. So what we see from that passage is that the word of God serves us as a light. We see better. We choose where to go based on the scripture, according to the scripture. We live according to the scripture. We choose to live according to the scripture. If we obey God's commandment, that's one of the options how we live in the light. 
Second way how we live in the, if we, if we read the scripture, it enlightens our thoughts, our mind. Otherwise, if we don't, then we automatically generate selfish or uh, carnal uh, thoughts because we deal with sinful nature. And when we have not, when we don't have enough light that comes from the scripture, then our thoughts process are often evil you know we're always mad at someone sad because of someone someone is always at fault and we are like feeding this bitterness how through our thoughts we're feeding offense uh, resentment once again through our thoughts but when light comes in we see things from different perspective that's why it's important for this for this light to enlighten our thoughts Another point is it, it talks in that passage that if we live in the light, we have fellowship with each other. So when we don't have enough light, we don't have the fellowship. The fellowship is broken because of some, someone offended you, because of that hurt. And we know, we have experienced that. We are not in peace with someone because we're lacking that light. We don't walk in the light. We don't want to deal with forgiveness. We choose a different path. And then when we, when we talk about fellowship, question fellowship with who? Fellowship with people or fellowship with God? If you're not walking in the light, or if you do, you have fellowship. Fellowship with who? With God or people? It affects both. If we don't walk in the light, it affects your fellowship with people. And it affects your fellowship with God. And it's very, very interesting. Some English translations, they say that this fellowship is can be interrupted because of your, be, be, um, you don't have the relationship with you and your Lord, you don't have it anymore because sin stands in the way. Sin divides people from God. That's why Jesus Christ, he came to reunite, but sin always serves as an obstacle between you and God. So if you don't have, if you have presence of sin in your life, you have no fellowship. And then it's interesting that when you do not have fellowship, true fellowship with the Lord, with your God, you lose that sensitivity of where you're wrong. Because there is not enough light in your life. If you read carefully, try to follow the phases or the steps. So first step, if you are in the light... Okay, I am. Then you will have fellowship. Okay, with who? With both people and God. And if you have fellowship with God, as a result of that fellowship, it will bring so much light in your life that you will see where you are wrong, even though before you never noticed it. And then you have a choice. Once you see it, if you confess, but you also have an option not to confess. You also have an option to ignore it. And then you don't have fellowship. What do you mean I don't have fellowship? I pray to God every day. Yeah, you pray before you go to bed. And you also pray, Lord, give me this. Lord, fix this. And Lord, you are, you know, like three days behind. Like you need to help me yesterday. Is this fellowship? Do you fellowship with your spouse like that? Give me this, give me that, and you're behind, and you owe me this and this. What if you start your conversation like that with your spouse? You know, honey, what? You know what? I'm sorry. Ooh. Hmm. Now both ears are turned on. Both. Not halfway, both. Why? Different level of fellowship. Agree? Different level of fellowship. Same approach, you use it with God. When you come and when you confess, then the Bible calls it fellowship. Fellowship. If it talks about light, if you walk in the light, that means that there is a possibility that you walk in the darkness. 
What is the third option? There is a possibility you walk like, you know, halfway, kind of 70% darkness, 30% light. Or 50%, 51, 60 to 40, it doesn't matter. But yeah, there are options. But if we walk in the light, then we have fellowship. Fellowship with people, fellowship with God. And then God's presence, because of that fellowship, because of that light, it shows our weaknesses, things we have not seen before about ourselves. And another verse to prove that thought, you remember the Bible says, why do you judge your brother because he has a little stick in his eye, but you don't see a big log in your own eye? Same concept. You see, same idea. So that proves once again that there is a possibility, there is a high chance that you and me, we cannot see ourselves properly. That's why we need this light in our life that helps us to have that fellowship and to improve and to go into the right direction. You know, uh, when we confess or when we don't, Sometimes we can fall into this phase where we're chronically doing something wrong and we don't see, we don't do anything about it. For example, if you sin with a, let's call it big sin, adultery, you're getting drunk, you're doing something horrible, you understand that it's bad, you understand that you need to confess, you understand that you need to repent. What about screaming, yelling, getting angry, lying? calling people names, putting other people down. How about that? How do we deal with that? Where, in what category do we put these actions? What do we do with them? Do we confess? Do we just let go? Do we forget about it? It's not a big deal. What do we do with that? And if we don't confess, if we repeat it on a regular basis, if we chronically keep doing it, what happens is... We, it's very interesting, you see, it talks about sins in plural. So it's not just one sin. Many, could be many little things, many like little details. And then it says, if you confess them. But first of all, I would like to remind to all of us that God, He is a loving Father. So He's not after you like, haha, you forgot, you forgot to mention this detail, so you're going to burn. No, He's a loving God. He's not after you to get you, but he's just sharing the concept of how you can feel clean, free. This lack of joy that you have been after for, for, for I don't know how long. It has to do with that. And when we confess... A different, uh, a different uh, effect happens in our life. I remember when we were fasting this uh, January, this of this year, I expected a lot from God, but not this. I realized who I need to go to and apologize. And honestly, if I would knew ahead of time that that would be the result of my fast, I probably would not fast. Would you fast? If you would know that, you know, like, like, you know, star for five days and then we will tell you who you have to go and apologize. Like, what is this, Lord? You know, I have grand, I have, you know, great plans. Lord, show me this, like, solve this. And what do you mean, like, Lord, what, what is this about? And that's what I went through. When you go into this fellowship and this light, even though you have been a Christian maybe for many years, but we are to grow and mature and to be transformed into the image of Christ. And that's what happens through fellowship with Jesus Christ. And then, if we don't do that, if we chronically repeat these like, you know, little things, little sinful actions or words, we basically train ourselves. We train ourselves. We accept that this is normal. And when we go through training, what happens? When you train yourself over and over again, you train and you are very committed, you're very stable. When you train yourself in something, you become a professional. 
But in that particular example, it's uh, in a bad way. You become a professional by not confessing. You become a professional by not admitting. You become a professional calling what is black, you call it white, or you call it gray. And uh, another option is when you come to the Lord and you say, Lord God, I hate what I do. I don't want to do that. Sometimes I hate myself. Not because you have a problem of self-esteem. You have that hate towards sin. Lord, I just don't want to do it. Another option is like you do it over and over again. You scream, you yell, you get angry. And then what happens? And then the, the mood just gets better. And you keep going. And then you scream, you yell. We, because you know, we people, we, we use our tongue so much every day. <laughs> That's why we have consequences sometimes, you know, because we use our tongue so often. And, but when we don't, you know, deal with it, then it becomes, what's not normal becomes normal. We, are, we keep going without confessing. And then we wonder why uh, the relationship or the fellowship is broken. I kind of pray to God. I'm kind of Christian. I'm kind of in church. I kind of watched online. I'm kind of, you know, this and that. But the relationship, fellowship is not there. But if we do confess, the Bible says that he is faithful and he forgives. We as believers, we must remember this, that he forgives our sins. And we are to accept that by faith, not by feelings. Sometimes you might say, well, I don't feel like it's not about your feelings. It's the word of God that says, if you confess, you will be cleansed and you will be forgiven. Before we go further, I think we must realize that every time we sin against a person, we sin against God before. And first of all, we sin before God. We sin against God. First of all, let me give you an example. Psalm 51 verse 3 through 4 it says david is praying lord god i recognize different translation says i acknowledge my sin it haunts me day and night that's why sometimes people they go and confess because it the sin it hunts you down you cannot forget it you fly to mexico all inclusive result it doesn't help it hunts you down you carry a burden and then it says he says He's praying against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. And you will be proved right in what you say. And your judgment against me is just. Hold on, David. If you read the context right before, David, he sinned. He committed adultery. And after that, he's confessing and he's praying. And we all read his prayer. Hold on, David, you sinned against God? Mm, yeah, maybe, but first maybe you should go and apologize to her husband. You cheated with his wife. Why is David saying, Lord, I have sinned against you and you alone? Whoa, whoa, hold on. No, 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 you sinned against people. No. When we sin against people... First of all, we sin against God, our Creator. And then you also are guilty in front of people. But that's why, first of all, when we realize that, it helps us to be, to stay in that fight against sin. Because first of all, you don't want to grieve your Lord, your God. You sin against Him. And then it says, in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, it proves that same thought. It says, do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit, or do not grieve Holy Spirit. And then it says how we do it. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. 
So every time when we scream at someone, yell at someone, put down someone, we think that we don't scream at Holy Spirit. We scream at this uh, guy, Alex. But Bible teaches us that when you yell at him, at your wife, at your kids, you're actually grieving Holy Spirit. I agree. I never thought about it either. I never scream at Holy Spirit. But I scream at many other people. And that's why we always sin against God, first of all. We grieve Holy Spirit. This is New Testament, guys. And it talks about believers because only believers have Holy Spirit. So it talks about us, those who are already saved. We have Holy Spirit, those who are born again. And the Bible warns us, do not grieve Holy Spirit. So, okay, it happened. I did yell at someone. I, I have anger issues. So what? Everybody is screaming at kids. Everybody is screaming at their spouses. But it doesn't mean that it's right. It does not mean that it's right. So what do you do when it happens? The fellowship is broken. You grieved Holy Spirit. And then you expect fellowship with Holy Spirit? Come on. How? Why? The Bible warned you. You grieved Holy Spirit. Do not bring sorrow to Holy Spirit. It will, it will affect your relationship with Him. And it gives us practical steps how we do it. So what is the way out of it? Confess. The Bible says, if you confess. How often have you confessed after a simple thing? You know, you have screamed at someone. You, you got angry at someone. And then that same day you came home and you said, Holy Spirit, forgive me. I have grieved you first of all. And then you go and you apologize to the other person. What happens if we don't do that? We don't apologize to Holy Spirit. We don't apologize to people. What happens? Lack of light. No fellowship. Your heart grows cold. Lack of joy. Your heart becomes hardened. That's why the Bible calls us to forgive. Confess. And you get cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Psalm 19, it says, Oh Lord, how can I know all the sins in my heart? Cleanse me from the hidden sins. He's even talking, trying to confess to God things that, he, that people don't even know. People don't even have a clue that I have that sin in my life. But please cleanse me, forgive me. I remember one person, he was confessing and he said, he was confessing like it was a long, long list. And then he said, Lord, please forgive me for things I possibly forgot to confess. He was going all the way, full force. Lord God, I just want to be free, completely free. I don't want to live this double life. I don't want to call normal what is not normal. Psalm 51, David is saying, the effect, look at the consequence of sin. Create in me a clean heart. How do you get a clean heart? You remember, if you confess your sins, God he is faithful and just to cleanse you. So how you get a clean heart? Not the blood of Christ, yes, but the, the step before. If you confess. So create in me a clean heart. Oh God, renew my spirit. Renew my steadfast. Different translation says, renew my loyal spirit. Restore me the joy. One of the biggest effects of sin that is not confessed, you have zero joy. It's negative. No joy. And you cannot buy the joy. Do you know how many billionaires they have committed suicide? Why? They had enough billions to buy joy online. They didn't, they didn't get it. Why not? Because joy, you cannot buy it with dollars. Joy and happiness, it has to do with your inner being. It has to do with your spiritual. It has to do with your spirit. That's why he says, Lord, bring me back the joy. That's why we often go, we're not only busy in life, we're burdened in life. Burdened. Because we have accepted what is normal. And we called it, what is not normal, we called it normal. Screaming, yelling, grieving people, grieving Holy Spirit. And what happens next? We're waiting for, the, for this wave of good mood 
Now we feel better. What about the other waves? Where did it go? We just got used to it. So what happens when you don't confess? You turn it into a habit. Doing what's wrong becomes a habit. You don't deal with it. But if we confess, the other effect, a different effect happens inside of us. And then he also talks about the spirit. Different translation says, New King James translation says, give me free spirit, free. So the reason why sometimes people do not, don't feel free, because they have something that they have not possibly confessed, or they don't even see it, because there's lack of light. That's why we receive freedom, true freedom. And another translation says, restore my spirit or makes my spirit stronger. So confession has to do with the health of your spirit. It's either strong it's, or it's weak or it's somewhere in the middle, but it definitely affects our mood and it affects our spirit. That's why we're called to confess before God, before God, first of all, First of all, before God and Holy Spirit. And it's important to remember Jeremiah 31, 34. The Lord says, I will forgive their wickedness. I will forgive their sins and I will never again remember their sins. And you cannot put someone's name under that quote. Because people sometimes don't forget. Sometimes people will never forget. But praise God for God, that God is not like we sometimes. We sometimes cannot forget. But God is saying, if you confess to me, if you come to me, I will forget and I will never remember. That's how glorious and kind and wonderful our God is. Second point is confessing to one another. So first was confess to God. Second is confessing to one another. So let's read James chapter 5 verse 16. What New Testament says about confession. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has a great power and produces wonderful results. Different translation says confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. Each other who? Anybody? Each other? My neighbor? My, f my best friend? Who do you mean each other? Well, we definitely see in the New Testament that the Bible gives us a right to confess to other people. To each other. First of all, we must understand that first of all, we are called to confess to the person who we did wrong. If you hurt someone, go and confess to that person. If you offended someone, acknowledge, admit, come, go, ask for forgiveness, apologize, confess to each other. Sometimes it's much easier to confess to God hundred times than to come and to confess to your wife one time or to your husband. So that's why this relationship is also important. Confess to each other. I know that uh, the Bible also tell, tells us that, you know, when you bring a gift, first stop right there, go and reconcile, the Bible says, and then come and bring your gift. So once again, that same principle, you know, go and reconcile and then bring your gift. So we often say, you know, I don't want to deal with that person, but I'm okay with God. But you know, when we're okay with God, a side effect of you being okay with God, you will have peace with people. You will not deal with grudges, bitterness, unforgiveness. And it's only possible because of the grace of Jesus Christ that can be, that can work through us, to, in us. You know, uh, ag acknowledging, confession equals I acknowledge, I, 
I recognize, I admit, it's already a big step towards the victory. But you know, there are many good doctors that have, they gave many good advice to many people, but it doesn't mean that it helped them. You know, I can quote, I can tweet these good advice from doctors, you know, stay in good shape. Cool quote to share, right? Don't you think so? But will it help you? Not really. Even if you admit, even if you realize whatever doctor is telling you that it's my issue, it doesn't mean that you are already victorious. You still have to go and take medication and go on a diet and possibly exercise. There's a long process ahead of you before you will celebrate. So when we talk about our actions on a daily basis, sometimes these chronicle wrong acts or words, if we, like I said, if we don't deal with them, then the relationship is affected, both with people and with men. And um, it's okay sometimes to admit, I have a very important question for all of us. How often do you ask Holy Spirit, please show me where I'm wrong? How often? When was the last time you prayed such prayer? Holy Spirit, I know that sometimes I see so many logs in different people, but I don't see much in my own eye. Holy Spirit, reveal to me where I'm wrong. Have you ever tried that prayer? Have you ever tried to go on that level of fellowship or relationship? You know, yeah, it's kind of true when we read this passage. It says that we have as an option to go and, to conf and we can confess to other regular people. But at the same time, even though there is no direct command in the New Testament that you have to go and confess only to pastor, it says confess to each other. But at the same time, even though there is not a direct command, at the same time, and there is a danger when you do that. And we'll talk about it in part number two. But today I would like you to, I'd like to recommend for you, even if you go to another person, make sure that person is mature spiritually. Godly person. God, you know, uh, the person who fears God, who has capability to help you. Because you're not interested in just the process of going through confession, right? It's not about process. You're, you're, we're all about results. Right? So you want to make sure that it will bring you results. So when you choose someone, make sure that person is competent enough to help you spiritually. To get out of this darkness. You know, because you can sometimes share your pain, your sin with someone. And just the second before that, you know, you were broken. You were injured. And now here you go, you have two people broken, two people injured. Because the friend that who you confess to, he doesn't know what to do with you. He doesn't know what to do with you. He doesn't know if he should bring you to jail or to pastor or just hide or pretend that he didn't hear anything. And then you shared with him, you know, you confessed with, with him your story. And then, you know, you couldn't sleep at night and now he doesn't sleep for three days. So what did you do? What did you, at least you can talk to him, you know, because both of you are not sleeping. That's the only good, good thing I see out of this. But don't you, 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 you need a result, right? Spiritual, that's what you're after. So when you're looking, when you are confessing to someone, don't look just at their smile. Look at the fruit of their life. And also, for some people, I know that today it's very popular to become counselors. Today many people, they... they they want to become counselors, even though I think it's a very uh, hard job to, to, you know, to comfort people and to uh, counsel people. Because sometimes they go through such horrible, uh, horrible, you know, painful situations. You just, you just sit there and listen for, for one hour and you're like, for the rest, I have been in these shoes. And for the rest of the day, your, your, your arms, they become kind of weak, you know, you, 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 you kind of, you, you can't get back to your senses, you know, it's like you just heard uh, their story and you're like thinking, oh, oh, what about this? What, ab what about kids? Like, and you're like, this is horrible. And 
some people, I believe that those who want to be counselors or who want to maybe, you know, like you can come to me and confess to me, they don't realize what they want. And some of them, I think they're not spiritually ready. You, you look at them, they're dealing with bitterness themselves. You know, they have this revolt, they have this uh, extremes here and there. And uh, on the other side, I know that some people are very genuine and they're very open and they're mature enough to help you. And they will comfort you, they will listen to you, and they will bless you and pray for you. I know that it also it's also out there. So, if you are struggling with someone, I encourage you to go to someone, at least someone, so you can get help. Because it's better than nothing. We will talk in the part number two, should we talk to pastor? How important that, how different is that talking to my best friend, confessing to him what I did, kind of we did together, or uh, is it better to go to the pastor? It's, it's, uh, we will talk about it later. But what I would like you to, in a conclusion, what I would like to say is this. Confession brings light brings joy, brings freedom. Not because you said it to me, but because you acknowledged where you stand without God, how you are nothing without God. No joy, no room for happiness, like nothing. You're just burdened. And not confessing equals darkness. Have you ever, I'm sure you have seen, if you, if you live in Florida, you have seen a snake at least once, right? When a snake is pausing somewhere, how much room does it usually take? Your little circle, a serpent. Usually in a little corner. So when you confess, light comes in. When you don't confess, you give room to darkness. And sometimes you don't need to give much room for darkness. You, sometimes it's just a little corner. Big enough for a snake to be there. But we all know the snake is there. Little dark corner. Little dark room. You're doing good overall, but maybe something is, it's a, you know, it's like it's holding you down. It's a bondage, but don't you want a freedom, complete freedom from everything? Don't you want to feel like, you know, to feel joy and to have that light, you know, you're just tired of carrying this, you know, and like, and blaming everybody. Lord, I just want to be free, finally free. Confession it can be can be also compared to. I don't. I'm not sure if you are afraid being alone in in the dark. When I was a kid, I remember I was afraid of being in alone in darkness. I remember when my parents would ask me to take out the garbage, we would have to walk pretty far, and we had no lights. On that street, had no lights uh, on that path. So I was afraid to walk by myself to take out garbage in darkness. What would I do? I would ask my brother, hey, can you come with me? Can you come with me to take out garbage? Don't you think it's fun? Let's do it together. So he would go with me. And you know what? The interesting thing is that circumstances did not change. But I would feel like I'm flying. <sighs> I am now I'm an eagle before I was a rabbit you know like going with this and now I'm flying what changed temperature did not change darkness did not go away yet I just had someone's presence next to me that's what made the difference that's what confession does to some people in spiritual life someone comes next to you 
and walks with you through darkness, you feel a lot different and it helps you to go through that darkness and it brings you to light. Praise God for light. Praise God for some people that are willing and ready to walk with us, next to us, while we're going through that darkness. So, we're about to pray right now. And I'd like to invite all of us, brothers and sisters. Do not be afraid to ask Holy Spirit, where did I grieve you? Do not be afraid to confess to Holy Spirit every day, every time you scream, you yell, you lie, you put people down. Holy Spirit, forgive me. Don't get into the other habit where it's normal. No, it's not normal. You're used to this. You got used to this, but Holy Spirit never got used to that. He, he, he left us a memo in His Holy Scripture. Do not bring sorrow to Holy Spirit. So do not be afraid to confess because it brings light and joy. You remember David? He said, I lost joy. Bring me the joy of your salvation. In Jesus' name, I bless you. Amen. Thank you.